Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ralph, and this Saturday I'm going to feature one of my builds. Hard to say this is a muscle car, but it definitely is a, a muscle muscle type car. This is a '69 Pontiac Grand Prix. For those of you who recognize it, and uh, what a car it actually is. I actually think it's pretty cool. It's one of my favorites, and this is an MPC kit that I restored. But on um, the '69 Grand Prix. This is one of uh, the last of John DeLorean's creations under his um, rule as Pontiac's general manager. It came to him as a suggestion from uh, Ben Harrison, who's suggesting putting the Grand Prix on the A-body platform to, to lighten it up and, and bring it down because the 68 didn't go over too well. It was a big behemoth. Sales were, were way down. I said nobody was really buying that car. So in comparison, produced this car on the A-body platform. And uh, so they, they went ahead and uh, started a rush in it and uh, actually developed it in 18 months. So there's there's quite a number of features on the 69 Grand Prix that make it uh, quite interesting. Technically, it's not even an A-body. It's a G-body for those of you guys who follow that kind of stuff. But it's really only six inches longer than an A-body, the, the frame is. So the frame and drive shaft are longer but a lot of the rest of the stuff interchanges all the suspension, um, front and rear, and a lot of that stuff. And the motor's kind of set pretty far back. So it makes it quite an interesting vehicle. But this was uh, his last car that he was pushing in development. As uh, for those of you who know, he moved on to Chevrolet in 1970. Uh, the 69 Grand Prix, it had some interesting features too. This was the last year of the 428. So these came with the 400s and the 4, 428s in it, which you can get in a couple of different horsepower configurations. 350 horsepower 400, and there was a 265 horsepower 400, uh, two barrel carburetor version. And then the hot ones, the SJ got the 370 horse 428 or the optional 390 horsepower 428. Supposedly both were available with the four speed um, but almost all of them were turbo 400. It took off too. Sales, uh, 1,112 uh, units were sold. So it way outsold the 68s when it came to production figures. And there were some other interesting features that went along with this car. Um, uh, one being the four speed was very rare. Only 670 something or 640 something four speed cars. So if you see a four speed of this, it's very rare. Um, but possibly an easy swap over because you can swap everything over uh, into it. So they make some of those parts. Uh, another interesting feature is also the first car to have no antenna. The antenna was in the in the glass. So 69, it became more common like 78 bodies and Chevelles and a lot of those cars in 1970 got the windshield with the antenna in it. But the 69 Pontiac Grand Prix was actually the first. It also can brag about being the longest hood uh, at the time. I mean, that, look at that, that's a monster with that peak, the beak or peak or whatever you want to call it, that's a monster. Um, so you can brag about it being the longest hood. Also interesting is the flush door handles that came with, something that uh, very, very few cars, um, no really American cars at the time were doing that. Unique features that went along with it. And I always liked this body style. I thought it was cool. I liked the four headlights and the peaked front end and, and bumper and grill. And I changed the wheels out. And then the vinyl top. And believe it or not, these things were actually 800 pounds lighter than the previous 68 Grand Prix. So even though it's still a big car, it was a lot lighter. So the performance was definitely up there. And some savvy tuners, Royal Pontiac, I guess, was able to get a couple of them into the high 13s after their tune but out of the box they could do uh, 15s um, high 14s in some of the road tests I think they're really cool but you don't see them today I mean like like I said they made 112,000 of them but it's a car you don't see today and when it comes to the sheet metal restoration parts just really aren't aren't out there overshadowed by the Monte Carlo which that was when John DeLorean went to Chevrolet he helped and pushed and the Monte Carlo came out so the Monte Carlo being highly related to this car it's also a G body but came out in 1970 so the Monte Carlo came out and uh, taking sales away because matter of fact 
1970, the sales dropped significantly. I think it was half. I'll talk more about the the 70 Grand Prix, but um, like I said, this this is definitely one of my favorites. But so with this particular build, um, it was a MPC kit, and it was actually built and in, in, in very nice condition when I got it. And um, even the mirror, I can't remember if I added the mirror because I was going to display it as is. And um, so this mirror was on it at the time. But um, so when I got this thing, and I'm going to put up some pictures of it so you can see what I started with. And it was a beautiful build, but it wasn't my build. So I decided that I'd tear it apart and I did restore the car and uh, enjoyed it and made it my build. So this, this is the result that you're looking at right here. But originally it was a real similar uh, silver, a, a dark silver, but it had a white vinyl top. But it was actually raw plastic. The top was not painted. And the interior was this really nice metallic red, um, kind of a, a dark red. And matter of fact, I was thinking about doing a white or tan vinyl top um, with a, a burgundy exterior. But I just, I just couldn't, I don't know why, I couldn't come to, to terms with that. So I ended up going with uh, this color, which is, uh, I believe, anthracite gray, which is a tester's paint. It's very transparent. And then I went with a black vinyl top and uh, um, changed out the wheels. It had its stock wheels, the more of the hubcap ones. These are the, the Pontiac Rallies, I believe, from the, they were in, I believe they were also in the 69 kit, but mine was built and had the other wheels on it. And my 70 kit, when I bought a 70 kit, it was a mint unbuilt kit. So I swapped and put these wheels on it because the 70, I'll eventually show you that build. I did something different on the wheels on that one. But these are the stock uh, white line tires that come in the MPC kit. And then I believe I had the bumpers re because they were pretty decent. But I had them redone. And then the vinyl top texture, that's the actual kit plastic. I just shot it with the semi-gloss black testers. And then did all the bare metal foil work, which the foil was kind of, kind of a lot of work. And then the turn signal ambler on the turn signals there. And then the only decal I added was right here on the peak, right on the, the hood there. I don't remember where I got it from. I keep thinking that's from uh, um, Ravel's 69 or 68 Pontiac uh, Firebird kit. So I believe that's where I got that from. Um, but that's the only decal I added. Everything else is foil. So it's quite a bit of foil work to it. And then put the turn signal amber or turn the stoplight red in there. So it's kind of pain, but those those are the turn signals or marker lights in the back. Not even sure if they really light up on this car. Of course, the dated 1969 bumper. And then the 69 grill. The 70 grill, they're actually vertical. And these are these are horizontal. But not much difference between the actual 69 and 70 kit. The emblems move around a little bit between a 69 and a 70. But the kits themselves, most of the parts are the same. In fact, this is the one that cracked me up because I believe it has the the power windows on the front door panels, and but not on the back door panels. And both door panels, if you can see it in there, both door panels have the uh, um, four-way window switches in the model kit. So instead of having one power window switch on the passenger side and four on the driver's side it actually has four on both sides so it's kind of funny about that but this one they're all power uh, all four one of them I think this this 71 or two I think the back ones are manual or something like that just trying to remember but uh, yeah she came out really nice and then I did this one you know it, it, it came with everything so I wasn't really missing anything so there's a stock air cleaner and a valve covers and I painted it Pontiac metallic blue and the radiator hose and it's just really simple underside. Matter of fact, the motor's kind of way up there. It should be a little farther back, but that's how the kit builds up. And then here's the underside. Stone stock and you can see the screws in the back, but just the pins in the front. But just detailed it up pretty simple, pretty nice. And uh, she she looks really really good, so I'm really happy with the way this one this one came out. So she's a she's a beautiful build here. And <laughs> the really long hood. But uh, so I hope uh, you guys enjoy this build and um, some of my other ones that 
non-muscle cars, but this one's still a factory stock build. And I really enjoyed it, even though I changed the interior and the vinyl top to black and redid all the bodywork and paint. But I um, you know, ha had to make her my own. That's just how how I am. I really don't display other people's builds or, you know, when I buy somebody else's build, I'll, I'll redo it. Even though some of them are very, very nice. And this is one that was very presentable and very nice. But I, I still just had to make it my own. So, okay, so thanks for uh, tuning in and thank you for subscribing and 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 love all your comments. I appreciate any of those. And hit that bell button so you can hear my latest uh, my latest uploads. And you guys, you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next Saturday.